Welcome to Cottage Talk Full Time. I'm Russ Goldman. Joining me right now is Emilio Danello. This is our initial reaction show to Fulham's 1-1 draw at Turf Moor. And as the title says, it was a drab draw at <laughs> Turf Moor. So, Emilio, before we get going and I get your initial reaction, I want to ask everyone who's going to be watching us live this question. And we want to know how you feel about it. Was this one point gained or a missed opportunity? If it's one point gained, please give us a thumbs up in the comments section. If it's a missed opportunity, meaning two points lost, please give us a thumbs down. We want your thoughts. We want to gauge how you feel about this draw because, again, there are so many ways you can look at it. We want to know how the fans feel, the supporters feel after this. 1-1, one, one, as you said, Amelia, we call it a drab draw, so – while we wait for some comments and some maybe thumbs down and thumbs up, <laughs> give me your initial reaction. Yeah, yeah it certainly was a, a drab draw. It was a, a pretty awful game, to be honest. You know, it's a, it's a game that you'd see if they were showing the highlights of the weekend. It'd be the last game on the on the television to be shown. It's just it's. Oh, it was horrible it, to watch. It was horrible. It was it was you know our first half was very very poor. We got you know we looked better, strong in the second half, but it was uncharacteristic of us. You know, our overall yep. performance over ninety minutes just wasn't good enough. If I, you ask me that question, thumbs, you know, I think it's a point gained yep. on the basis of our performance. But, you know, before the game, you would have expected it to be more than just only a point. But, you know, two seasons ago, we would have lost that game. But, you know, we we, we fought, we battled. And I think one all draw was a fair result. But it's Burnley a poor, Burnley a poor team, you know. But we we, we were too, we were given the possession away too cheaply. Our passing Absolutely. was off throughout the whole game. They bullied us from the from the first whistle right down to the end of the game. Their touchline was complaining about every foul that we. Oh, were we're going to talk about that. Yeah, you know, it's foul. a difficult place to go to traditionally, with fans or without fans. But yep. you know, we got we came away with a point. I think it was a fair result, like I mentioned. But yep. it's an ugly performance. But you know, and look, I'm saying Steve point game, but needed three points. I I agree with you. We needed three points, but on that performance, given it felt like we had a bit of a hangover from the Everton game. You know, I take four points from those two difficult away games. If, you, if, you, if you'd asked me on Saturday, four points from Everton and Burnley, I would have said, absolutely, give them to me. And we've done that. And okay. so we push on unbeaten, another game. You know, we, we didn't crumble under pressure. We made a lot of needless fouls. Or possession wasn't good enough. Nope. We were bullied throughout. And I've said this after the Everton game on Saturday, Sunday, for those who have watched, this game was always going to be difficult. Burnley will not give us space. Burnley will press us, push us. Bully us and force it to be said. And that's exactly what they did. That's so am I surprised that we underperformed today? No, I'm not surprised because this is a game like we did with Brighton. We don't respond against teams who make it difficult for us to play football. And we seem to struggle against those teams. Now, worry the Sheffield United game is going to be the same. They're going to, they're not, they're ugly to watch. They're not pretty, but they'll make it difficult for us. It's, have we got enough quality? We just, our passing just was all over the place today. So overall, it, it is a point gain based on that performance, but on reflection, you know, maybe we we didn't really do enough to win that game. No, we didn't do enough to win it, and uh, I still look at it as a point game. And, and as we started the show, and if you're just joining us, please feel free to share your comments. Was this a point gained or a missed opportunity for Fulham? And uh, if it's a point gained, do you feel that way? Please give us a thumbs up, and then if you disagree, obviously thumbs down on that. Give us your comments; we'll share it because we want to try to gauge how everyone's mm-hmm. feeling about it. But if you would have asked me before the match, Emilio, you already said you would have taken a draw. I did a preview show with Giannis. I said a draw. I said 1-1. One, one. Mm. So I'm not happy to be right about the score. I'm, I'm certainly not happy mm. because there was a – I think that, you know, again, am I happy that they just got a draw? No, I'm not happy, but I will take the point. I do think mm. it's a point game because they did not play that well. But, you yeah. know, you can look at it and say, obviously, it's a missed opportunity, but they did not deserve it. So I'm just going to go with, with a point game. That's how I'm looking at it. But as I was thinking before the match, that I would have taken the point. And everything that I was concerned about going into the match, the pressing, mm. like you yeah. had mentioned, I was afraid of how that was going to look. And it played out how my fears were. They they pressed yeah. us. They bullied us, as you said, Emilio. And we're going to talk about the theatrics of oh. Burnley's coaching staff and their players. And, you know, and again, I lost a little respect for Sean Deitch and his team after this match. Again, I don't watch Burnley each and every week, but they were complaining about every little thing. And but, we're going to talk about that because that, to me, took away from the match a little bit. A team that plays as physical as they do, really, yeah. you're going to react like that? 
you know, I'm, I'm sorry. This, honest, that, was, think, that, that was just too much for me. But, you, know, think, you know, look at it from, you know, they always look more dangerous. We gave away too many cheap free kicks. We did. From, that's, where they, that's where they get most of their, their productivity and their goals, from set pieces, from corners, from free kicks. They made it difficult for us. You know, we were, we were, we were bullied into making mistakes. Anderson, even there in injury time, what the hell are you making that foul for? You know, you put you put the team under unnecessary pressure. There's no need to commit a foul there. But we did that throughout the whole ninety minutes. So it's it was a poor performance. We looked a little bit hungover from the Everton result on Sunday. Yeah, it, it's two points dropped or two points lost. But you know, turf ball is never an easy place to go. Yep. So let's take the point and let's freshen up and 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 take take the game to Sheffield United on Saturday. That's going to be a tough game as well. Home advantage doesn't count in that game. They're going to be doing exactly what Burnley did. Yep. Be, be physical, bully us force us into mistakes and hope they'll get us snatching a penalty or, uh, you know, a cheap, you know, cheap goal to give away that. So I think the Sheffield United game is not a, a foregone conclusion. We've got a battle in that game as well. So get yourselves yep. fit, guys. Go back to the training ground and prepare for that game mentally and physically. Because that's, that's a huge game. Get okay. seven points from three games. I think most of the people watching us today, most of our fans will all have been happy and would have taken that. Okay. I'm going to share some comments. And uh, mm. when we talk about the, uh, Burnley uh, reaction. I, I will share a comment from a Burnley supporter and, and give him his uh, his fair due as well. He he obviously feels differently than I do. So uh, don't worry, my friend. I, I will share your comment when we get to there. So Daniel Cronrath says, Burnley aren't easy to play. I'll take a point. Our friend Steve Lidyard, <laughs> point game, but needed the three points. Here's from Dominic Versace. We play better mm-hmm. against better teams. This is what you said, Emilio, and so, play poor Thomas, against I'm poor in. teams. Now, I don't know Always if I would that. say Burnley are a poor team. I know you were kind of going there. I would just say that they are a difficult team to play against. Style-wise, I don't like the way they play, but they are a tough team. I don't know if i call them a poor team, but I understand where you're going on that. Uh, Ralph Leach then goes right here. Saturday is a win or bust? Okay, well, again, we'll we'll have to see. Every okay. game is a win or bust now. Yeah, so I mean, every game is a cup final now. So. Right, exactly. exactly. Yeah. David Allen's is a crap game, but a point better – then nothing. Burnley have always been one of the bogey clubs. And mm. listen, this is something that, that we've talked about. You know, mm. I said, throw out the records, throw out all that at Turf Moor. There are no crowds. But again, listen, mm. I want to give a lot of credit to Burnley. They are a tough team to play against. And I don't think that they are, are a poor side. I just think that they're a bad matchup for Fulham. And, and they play tough. And, uh, you know, mm. we struggled against it. But I think in the second half, we play better. But, you know, again, I think a draw is a fair result. That's the way I'm looking at it, yeah. Emilio. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, then the day it's, you know, what Stefan says is exactly my point. You know, yeah. we, did, we didn't get into our stride. I agree with you, Stefan. We were, we were very average today. But, you know, we, 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 we survived. We, we hung on for a draw at time. And to be honest, you know, it would, let's reflect other on Lookman's that chance at the end. I know, I know Chris Davidson's listening. We had a bit of a offline <laughs> conversation and me maybe, you know, calling Lookman out on Sunday, missing too many chances, his final ball not good enough. He was awful tonight, sorry. You know, he was a, he was our biggest player before Christmas and he was our most, you know, in terms of what he could offer. But he's been let down for the last two months. Today, that chance at the end, you've got to do better. You've got to hit the target. Make the, put the pre- goalkeeper under pressure. But what does he do? He blazes it over, tries to place it in the top corner. He's just his pass, just generally. I'm not calling him out specific. The whole team were very poor today, but... This debate about Lookman, is he is he offering enough? Is he our da- is he our danger player at the moment? He's not. On current performance, he needs to step up, to be honest, if he really wants to make a difference in his team. Yep. I hear you. I hear you, Emilio. I I totally hear you. Well, listen, mm-hmm. let's start with really breaking down the first half. And there really isn't many positives to okay. talk about the first half because again, Burnley were the better side in the first half and they mm-hmm. had an opportunity late in the first half, but it was a great save by Ariel that saved us, I guess you could say, mm. going into the half. I was just happy to go into the half mm. at nil nil. Your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. They you know they had a you know they, I can't remember who the who the striker was, but they, they should have they should have scored. We should have been yeah. one possibly even two nil down that first half. Ariola looked very they were nervous. Good. They were good in the first they were yeah. definitely good in the first half. Yeah. You know, Mariola wasn't very you know looked very nervous in that first half. He didn't have a particularly good first half. He made that important save but before that his kick, his punching wasn't very clear. He was getting himself, getting bullied by the Burnley Burnley attackers. That was the thing, you know. I think yeah, Burnley were better. Tarkovsky should have scored. I think it was Tarkovsky should have scored. I can't remember who it was now, but overall, poor first half. We what was our possession in that first half? Very very low, to be honest. Yeah. Burnley on top should have been ahead. 
Um, and overall, we were maybe put fortuitous to go at half time nil nil, and we regrouped and we came out a lot stronger. Obviously, Scott Parker had a had a, a gentle word in the in the players' dressing room, and obviously we came out a slightly different team. But yeah, just just, just our passing wasn't good enough, and it goes back. Is it Fulham not good enough? Was it Burnley had their tactics spot on, not I giving think, us the impression? That's the issue. They did see, one, they did a job on us. They see, did a job. I want to give them credit. You know, and again, uh, we're Fulham supporters. Hmm. We're going to pick at what Fulham did. And listen, the passing was terrible. Hmm. I'm not going to give excuses, but listen, the weather was a factor too. Okay, the weather, the weather definitely was. I don't think that they were hmm. prepared for the weather, the the wind, and you know, and I think that played a factor. <laughs> but that's still on the players. You have to adjust to the weather. It was definitely a factor in this match. They had to adjust, and obviously Burnley adjust. Burnley knows how to play in that weather, and they they dealt with it mm-hmm. very well. But for me, this goes to what Everton mm-hmm. didn't do, and what Burnley did do. Especially when we mm-hmm. talk about Burnley, especially in the first half, they pressed Fulham, and mm-hmm. they were the better side. I, I can't get yeah. past that. Let's look honest. You know, Burnley two weeks ago they came from behind to beat Aston Villa at home. Yeah. They went to Anfield and beat Liverpool. So come on, this is Burnley are not never an easy team to beat. You no. Know? You know, they're a tough tough place to go to. They've got some physical players. They've, they've got a settled Premier League team as well. They don't spend much money in the transfer. And they're pretty much rely on a stable, steady team. And they do a job. You know, they, they, you know. to be honest, none, none of us would like to watch Fulham play like that. But yeah. I'd rather stay in the Premier League rather than try right. to play fancy football and get relegated. So, right. at the end of the day, you know, Burnley were the stronger team in that first half and should have been ahead. You know, we were lucky to go in at nil-nil. Okay. All right. All right, let's talk about this now because um, I want to talk about the, as we said, the the gamesmanship because uh, I have a Burnley supporter who's watching us right now and and disagrees with with my thoughts that that uh, mm-hmm. he basically said that that Scott Parker did the exact same thing. I'm, I'll sh- I'll share share it in just mm-hmm. a second, but I'm just going to put up this banner. Describe Burnley's gamesmanship. Now again, oh. they really went crazy over <laughs> Ruben Loftus Cheeks. Foul. That's where this all began. The bench went crazy, and, and they were, you know, again reacting throughout the match. You know, and and again, whenever they, whenever a Fulham player, it seemed like got even close to them, they were going down. They were, you know, and mm. again, if it was, you know, even close to them, they were reacting like. And I'm thinking, this is a physical team. Why are they reacting like that? Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, describe Burnley, describe mm. their gamesmanship. Am I am I wrong to bring this up? No. And and I want to share this because I want to give this Burnley supporter some credit because he actually did comment and, and, and credit to him for commenting on this full hmm. show. But, you know, he said, well, listen, Scott Parker did the same. What what are your thoughts? It's, um, you know, how many times was, was Barnes on the floor, to be honest? He was constantly diving on the floor, complaining. You had Sean Dykes in the bench, effing and blinding every time there was a foul on the touchline. It's just... They're an absolute joke. They're, they're, I better not say what I think on air, otherwise this program okay. needs to be. Uh... Okay, I'm just I'm just sharing the <laughs> comments from this Burnley supporter. Says why wouldn't we complain? Few instances when you were going in for our legs. I don't agree with that at all. I I'm sorry, I, 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 I don't that. agree with that. But I you're entitled that. to your opinion. I didn't see that. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. I just don't like the theatrical diving, looking for penalties, looking for free kicks, complaining to the referee. Shout. That I don't like, you know, that, that that's poor gamesmanship from Burnley. And, you know, at the end of the day, Loftus-Cheek deserved a yellow. That was not a red card. So I don't know what planet no. these guys want to be. I'm being, I'm, you know me, I'm unbiased. I'm not, I'm not biased towards yep. a club if there's something that's not right. But, you know, Brady, why didn't he get a second yellow card for that? You know, at the end of the day, why did Sean Dyke substitute a substitute? So he knew that he, Robbie Brady was on the verge of getting another foul. He would have been that's off. That's right. So Sean Dyke did the right thing and took him off. So very lucky. Burnley should have been down to 10 men. Um, that that was two yellows. Fine. Well, I'm gonna right, right. I'm gonna ask the question again. If we're being fair, if there are Burnley supporters that feel that, and I don't know this, if Ruben Loftus Cheek should have gotten a red, shouldn't Robbie Brady have gotten his second yellow? Yeah, yeah. That was two. That was two yellow cards. If we're being fair, if we're being fair, that was, that, if he wasn't on a yellow, he would have got a yellow for the second offense. So therefore, that's the point. You know, you don't. You know, Steve Lydia, obviously. What do you think? Hey, obviously, if you're listening in. Um, I'm assuming you you think he should have got second yellow card and should have been straight off. So, but it's that, I just don't like their antics on the pitch. That's that's, yep. that's how that's how they play, you know. And it, it's it's kept them in the Premier League for a number of the seasons. So if, if we have to do that a bit more this season to stay in the Premier League, then yep. it may not be a, a preferred choice. But for me, it's 
we've got to stay in the Premier League. If we have to start resorting to Burnley style tactics, I'm sure most of us will accept that rather than playing football and getting relegated. But oh, I don't, oh, I, just com- don't like they, I don't like the way they play. Okay, here's a comment from our friend Tony Gold. Burnley had a game plan. It worked to some degree. Couldn't watch that crap every week. Now again, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of it, but you know it works. You know, say what you yeah. want, it works. There, I again, I'll give Sean Dyche all the credit for what he has mm-hmm. done at Burnley. The mentality, the identity that they built there, it, it yeah. really it works for them. I just you don't, know, I just don't like it. I, yeah, I, I don't just, want to watch that every week. But if I have to play more, if I have to watch the team playing more physical, more aggressive. And it gives us more chance to stay in the Premier League. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you I, want to play your boy out of trouble, Scott Parker, and get more draws, maybe that's not enough. So maybe we have to be a bit more physical. We have to rough it up. You know, be a little bully some of these teams a bit more as well. Yeah, I just and, they were just very passive, very lethargic, and very slow. We right. made it too easy for Burnley as well, but given their dues, we did. That's the we way did. they play. And we, you know, we, we struggled to adjust. Why did Liverpool struggle to, to beat them at home? They lost at home to Burnley. Why? Same reasons. If you, that's if you watch that game, same thing. They did a job on Liverpool, and they won. That's right, and and we're giving them their their fair due because, again, as Tony said, they had a game plan. Mm. This is how they play. It's effective. Mm. It has kept them in the Premier League, mm. and maybe Fulham should even look at you know how that they play to somewhat you know to be you know to be a little bit more aggressive at times because again, this team knows how to stay in this division. So I'll give them credit. I, I wouldn't want to watch it every week, but. It works. You know, you have to ask yourself, does it work? Do you want to watch this? Probably not, but you got to give them credit. Yeah. And yeah. and like you said, they've given other teams fits. You just mm. name them. So, again, mm. if you look at it in, in that context, go back to what we talked about at the beginning. Is it a point gained against a team like this? Like I said, I predicted a draw because I thought it's not a bad point. And I'm going to be honest. I I did thought it would be a decent point against Burnley because I knew this was going to be difficult. I knew it was going to be hard. I knew it yeah. would be very difficult. And I thought, okay, fine, the Sheffield United match. Mm-hmm. You know, you and I talked about this off air, not that I wanted to put more importance on that, but if you look at it, that's a more winnable match. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's a, more, it's a more winnable match. I, no. I knew that going in. Am I disappointed that they didn't get all three points? Yes, but they didn't deserve it, Emilio. I can't get past that. They didn't deserve yeah. to win this match. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm looking at some of the comments here from Lee Manning. You know, we need a quicker and more accurate pass. Exactly. I don't think we didn't have that luxury today. You know, they were pressing us. We were making poor mistakes, giving the ball away cheaply, giving conceding yeah. too many free kicks. It felt a bit like the beginning of the season when all we kept doing is giving yep. away cheap free kicks. So, Sorry. you know, that that yep. wasn't our way of, you know, that wasn't a football that, we, that we're accustomed to playing. But again, Bernie did a job on us. Nick Blomek, you know, Lookman and Loftus Street not offered much today. Only having one attack on the bench today really hampered us. Caban and Kamara not perfect by any means, but that would have given us options to switch it up. And I think that's a fair point. Yep. We were talking before the before the game. Our bench was very weak. Well, who did which game changes did we have on the bench today? We didn't have any. We didn't, and I think that actually hurt for them today. Yeah, yeah. There's no game changes on that bench. No, definitely, definitely not. All right, coming up next. Mill and I will talk about the second half, get our thoughts on the second half, and we're going to ask the question, who was man of the match? Because I'm still shaking my head. Who was man of the match, Emilio? I, I don't know mm-hmm. who you would put as man of the match because I, I don't know if there were any performances that I could really single out. No, not at all, to be honest. The whole team were very average, to be honest. It's, um, I don't think there was a man of the match. <laughs> who could you get? The goalkeeper, normally we give the goalkeeper a lot of man of the matches for keeping yeah. us in the game. He, he had a very mixed mixed game. I thought, you know, Anderson gave away a few cheap free kicks. Tosin, I've mentioned it a couple of times, and seems to be not making a few mistakes. I think maybe we should reflect on on, on the goals in the second half in a moment. Yep. I thought Tosin, you know, was a bit naive, you know, in the lead up to their goal. Lamina, we, if you turn the clock back, also conceded possession very cheaply in the lead up to their goal. So overall, I, I don't think it was a, a man of the match, to be honest. I don't, no, no one stands out for me. You know, I'm looking. Okay. Chris Davidson's popped up, and I'm not sure who he's referring to about playing really well today, but uh hope you're not mentioning Lookman because, uh <laughs> you know, we had this conversation offline. And, uh you know, to be honest, uh Chris, what you said to me, Loftus Street doesn't cover his chances. Sorry, where was Lookman today? So, um yeah. 
you know, so anyway. Okay. 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 Let's, let's get to talking about the second half, but we actually have to start with mm-hmm. how Fulham came out in the second half. I thought they came out positively mm-hmm. and they got themselves a corner and guess what, Emilio, they scored. Now this is one of these ugly goals. I, mm-hmm. I don't care how it goes in the back of the net. I don't care that it went off of Ana and that it, 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 it hit a few people. I, I don't care. I don't care that Robbie Brady of all people actually kicked it in. I, I don't care. Yeah. They scored the goal, but again, it was the initiative to start the second half. Obviously, something was said at halftime. Yeah, absolutely. I think I mentioned it against Everton, the game on Saturday. I think maybe our, our luck started to turn, and that goal was a good indication of that. You know, yeah. so, you know, maybe three or four games ago, that would have gone, you know, either side of the post, it wouldn't have gone in or cleared off the line. But some of these, there's some moments where I'm seeing a bit of luck coming our way, and. You know, Ina didn't know much about that. And obviously, Robbie Brady uh, failed to clear it off the line. So thank you very much. I'll take that. It was ugly, like you mentioned. but I have to share this from our our Burnley supporter that's watching. (laughs) Yes. It's a fair point. But, uh, well, he would have been man of the match if he had been sent off. Yep. And clearly he wasn't. So, uh, but, you know, you take ugly goals. They all count. Exactly. Like I said, a few games ago, that wouldn't have gone in the back of the net. There's a bit of luck starting to go our way. And if we can get we can get more of this luck, then you know we've got every chance to stay up in this division. Now, I want to share this comment from our friend Colin Frazier, who's watching. And this is a good point. This is something that you said to me off air. I could name so many foam sides of the past that would have lost that yeah. game. That's a great point. So in that vein, if you're going back to that, this is a point gained. Yeah. If you yeah. look at it it's that season, way, bro. Colin, it's a point gained because normally – you would think that Fulham would lose this. If you go back two years ago, we played Burnley at Burnley. We lose that game. You know, mm. again, this team found a way to get, get a point. And as you said, mm. Emilio, obviously, mm. I, I don't feel they deserve to win it, but they had an opportunity at the very end from yeah. Wickman. I'll, I'll, you know, yeah. again, we'll go back Chris, to that. Look at Chris's comment. You know, well, I'm, I'm not, if you listen to me, Chris, I said the whole team played poorly, but you've got to do better there. You said Loftus-Cheek missed chances. Lookman's missed another chance. But yep. You've got to hit the target there. I don't care whether you're yep. Lo- Loftus-Cheek, you've got to hit the target. Yep. And he failed miserably. What yep. else did he do today? Sorry, I am entitled to single him out. And if you don't <laughs> like it, Chris, then you don't listen, okay? Okay, very good. All right. All right, Emilio. Now, what's interesting about it is that uh, after the match was over, I was watching NBC Sports with... Uh, Danny Higginbotham, and this is what he said, and this goes back to what happened with Mm -hmm. the goal from from Burnley because I want to talk, you know, again, and listen, this was a good goal Mm -hmm. for them, and and we have to give them credit Mm -hmm. for the goal. But we have to talk Mm -hmm. about, you know, again, how Fulham played on this because who's at fault for the Burnley goal? Because Tosin, you know, again, Rodriguez went right by Tosin, but you had – a a different thought on who's responsible Mm. for the Burnley goal. So so let's talk about it because again, what's interesting about it, it was, uh, it was Robbie Musto and who formerly played in England. Then of course you have uh, Danny Higginbotham and and they said that the danger time is right after you score Mm. because your guard's down and the other team is looking to respond. And, uh, and that might've shown, and again, I'm paraphrasing a little bit of our naivete, our, our, that we have so many young players that, again, we weren't fully on for for these moments right after they scored. But, again, who's at fault for the goal? Clearly, if you look at it just purely from the, you know, from the, from the cross, it was Tosin. Tosin was very naive there. But turn the clock back 30 seconds earlier, if I, remember, if I recall rightly, Lamina gave away the ball very, very cheaply. Gave away possession. Burnley do what they do. But if one hoof the ball upfield. Tosi got caught out and, you know, they were very direct at the end of the day. So it's uh, yeah. it's, two, it's twofold. I think I've said Tosi hasn't been the same player the last five or six games. He's made a few mistakes, a little bit yeah. more naivety, a bit too enthusiastic at times, got on the wrong side of the player and he got caught yeah. out today. But equally, I thought Lamina maybe, uh, again, did that all, we did that all 90 minutes. We were giving the ball away cheaply, but that, you know, that, that cost us. That, that, you know, he was, in a good, he was in a decent position midway through that half. And gave the ball away far too cheaply for me, so and that right. that led to Burnley doing what they do best: root one, and they scored. Okay, all right. Now after that, you know, and again, I was listening to Tony Gale, and Tony Tony actually thought that Fulham played much better in the second half. Mm. You know, and again, Tony's a former 
Fulham player, and uh, he keeps that bias to a side. He's actually, I think, a pretty good analyst where he he doesn't, you know, he, he plays it both ways. He'll tell you honestly uh, his thoughts, and he thought that Fulham actually played much better in the second half, and I agree with mm. Tony on that, but it certainly wasn't good enough. But when you look at Fulham's play, you know, and again, made, made some substitutions, but I, I just want to go right to this because, again, we're talking about this, and Chris Davidson, I'm very sorry that we're going to go right here and we're going to talk about it. But I think we have to talk about, at the very end, Lookman's miss. Because, again, we've seen this before. For all the endeavor, for all the good play that he 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 gives you, he needs to score at the very end of this match, Emilio. Yeah. When we look back at this, you know, and I know fans are going to say this, it's the difference between one and three, right? Mm, but, yeah. you know, Fulham didn't deserve all three points. But he could have stolen it for Fulham. Yeah. yeah. And at some point, we need these players to score. And then they were actually talking about that. When you're in a relegation scrap like that, you need goal. You need goals. You need hmm. match winners. This is the opportunity. I, I hate, I, I'm, I'm not trying to single him out, but no. you have to look at this. This is a miss for Fulham. And unfortunately, I do like Adam Lookman, but we need him to score. We, we need I, him to be more clinical. He's just not clinical enough. You said this on, on the last show. Yeah, many times I've said it. I'm, I'm not singling him out. I'm just being very honest. If you look at his performances since COVID, he's not the player he was before Christmas. That's 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 all I'm saying. That that's factual. If anyone disagrees with me, then say so. But I'm just saying he was our key player this in the other side of Christmas. He was he was he was a, he was terrorizing defenses, threatening set pieces. He's a different player. Something's not right here. We're seeing maybe the player that Everton saw when he was playing for them a few seasons ago. Physically not strong enough. Final ball not consistently good enough. And you know, in, you know, from that charge, you've got to hit the target. Maybe not. I'm saying scoring would have. You know, you're in a great position there. Where that's Loftus Cheek, Tom Kearney, Mitrovic as a str- as a, an attacking player, you've got to do better from there. And yep. you don't get many chances in this division. And that was our chance, like you said, to nick three points. But you know, yep. and it goes begging. We we go to Sheffield United on Saturday and try again. Right and. Uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna. Yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna share some more comments because the uh, fans commenting on Lookman. Lookman was very can average. I, can today. I tell you what I said to you off air? Listen, I said to you, yep. if we stay up in this division with the current squad, I would not sign Lookman okay. based on the last two months' worth of performances. He was a big player for me before Christmas, and I loved him and yep. I've defended him. I've, I've been his number one fan, but based on the last two months' performances since he's had COVID, not the same player. Okay. Would I sign him today if we stayed up? Probably not. Okay, very good. All right. I do want to share this because, again, Chris, I don't think we've been singling you out, but um, I haven't said anything about Lookman. No, no, we're just saying in general going back to the last match. That's all. Not even, not even, not even about this match, Chris. So, you know, no, no offense, Chris. I'm just being factual. I'm not being, I'm not being, I'm not, I'm not picking up here. I'm just (laughs) stating facts. Yeah. If people don't like to listen to facts, then they can switch off and not listen to me. Okay, and uh, I'll just share one more comment from from Stefan, yeah. who gives yeah. us some some good comments. Lookman yeah. also not yeah. trying yeah. to bully defenders, and that's actually a good point, yeah. Stefan. Yeah. And this is a team, like I said, this goes back to I do respect Burnley. I, I have a lot of respect for them because they know how to grind out results. They know how to win. They 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 actually know how to win. Fulham is still trying to figure out how to win, mm-hmm. and uh, I think we saw a team still again. Mm-hmm. They had the great victory against everything they look great but when you have a team that is physical against you and bullies you Mm. you're gonna have to step up to that and Mm. unfortunately the players like I said I think that I just don't think that again it's not that they weren't up for it it's just that they they struggled against this physical side they they struggled they struggled against the press and hopefully hopefully they will learn from this because I there's there's a there's a decent side in here with Fulham and and by no means am I giving up on the season. And that and this goes back why I think it's a, a point game because I, I believe in this team. I think this team is going to stay in the vision. I will I will continually say that. And I don't see this as a terrible result. I you know, I, I, I don't see it as a missed opportunity because I was predicting a draw. So that's kind of where I'm going on it. I just thought if they could get a, a result, I just didn't want them to lose Amelia. Yeah. I mean, I, up to I, mean I know that's terrible to say. Yeah. yeah. Because, because obviously I want them to win, but I thought it was more important that they did not lose this match, that at least they have some kind of momentum going into the other two matches. Because mm. as I said, that 
Sheffield United match, you know, as people keep pointing out to me, yes, you need to win that match. I agree. You hmm. need to win that match. Be, Sheffield. The question being said is, you know, I'm not, again, we're not talking about Lookman, but just saying Ben Lawrence saying maybe he needs to have a couple games on the bench. And again, Sheffield United is going to be the same type of team as Burnley. Physically strong, not pretty, ugly, bullying us. Is, is that the right game for Lookman? I'm just putting it out there. You know, and then Steve Reynolds asking, who do you replace him with? Don't be surprised. You might see Bobby Decadovarid and Cavalera on both flanks on Saturday against uh, Sheffield. Just possibly. I'm just putting it out there. Yep. You know, he's got great skill like Colin Fraser is mentioning, but it's too lightweight for me. And, you know, against a physical team like Sheffield United, hopefully he proves yep. me wrong. He gets a hat-trick on, when, on Saturday, but he needs to step up. You know, so, yep. you know he, needs to, he needs to recover that form he had before uh, before Christmas. Yeah, I, I hear you, my friend. We need him. He's, a, he's, a, he's an important player. We do, we do. We, 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 do we absolutely do. And listen, I know it sounds like that, that we're being negative on some of these players. It, it's not. It's just that we actually, we we do need Adam Ola Lookman to mm-hmm. step up. And, you know, listen, there were there were people that wanted him gone from Fulham after yeah, the West Ham match. Yeah. And, I, and, and, and I was not one of them at all because no. I believe in this player. I just want him to be able to finish. He just needs to finish. And uh, if he starts doing that, he'll become the complete player that I think he can be. I just think that he's this close. But I could listen, I could say the same thing about Ruben Loftus Cheek. Yeah, absolutely. Some of these yeah. players need to put the ball in the back of the net. And Ruben Loftus Cheek actually, I read an article about him and, and he, he says the goals are coming. And, and my comment to that is, when are they coming? Yeah, exactly. Because, because yeah. honestly, Ruben, we need them. We, we yeah. need your goals. We, Adam Ola, we need your goals. We know that you're giving all that you can. Both of you, both you guys are giving everything that you can. And, uh, and I, we know you're trying. And hopefully the goals will come. That's my point. The goals we hope will come because, because we do need them. And, and it's funny, Emilio, because I actually really like this team. I like this team mm-hmm. because, because this team gives you effort. Two seasons ago, I, I didn't like that team at all. I didn't like the team at all mm-hmm. that went down. I think this team is fighting. I just mm-hmm. think that they are just lacking that ability to score right now. I think that's what, what it comes down to. And then when they come up against a team that presses them and bullies them, mm-hmm. they're going to have to find a way to fight through mm-hmm. that. But other yeah. teams ha- have struggled with that as well. So it's not just for Yeah. So you, yeah. You, would def- you would definitely agree with that. Okay. All right, Emilio, just to finish this up, give me your man of the match. I, I can't believe we're going back to this. <laughs> I'm struggling to think of who who the man of the match is, to be honest. I thought, you know, Harrison Reed had a good second half performance. You know, if you look yep. at it purely on second half, you know, first half was was a, was dire. I thought Reed worked hard. You know, I thought Cavalero, I thought, looked reasonable when he came on, to be honest. I, I yep. think I'm struggling. I honestly can't give a man of the match. But I'm going to say yeah. it's probably Harrison Reed. But again, it's. I don't think it's. A, it wasn't an obvious man of the match. I mean, there was no. There was no standout performance for me. Yeah. It, what's mm. funny. What's funny about him. And, and again, this wasn't his best match. But out of everyone, I could see why. Why you went with Harrison Reed? Because again, they struggled in central midfield. They. Mm. They did struggle. You know, they were on top of him. That not just mm. him on, on Lamina. They were on top of them. So it was. It's difficult to give mm. man of the match. But um. I understand why you're going with Harrison mm. Reed. I, I I do like the comment from the Burnley supporter giving it to Robbie Brady. I kind of <laughs> like that. <laughs> but you know what? Like I said, sometimes you need a little luck, my friend. Sometimes, yeah. you, sometimes you need that. So when you think about it, when you really look at it, Fulham have lacked a little bit of luck. Well, they got a little bit of luck. They didn't deserve all three points, so maybe the luck gave them the point. I don't know. You know it, if you yeah, look at luck's it, you know. turning. The luck's turning. Some of those decisions are going our way. So yeah. it's long may they continue. And if we get a bit more luck the next few games, then, you know, we, we, we're still in it. We've still got a chance. Okay. You know, it's not the end of the world, I'll, okay. like I said. One okay, point now, in terms of safety. Okay, now how about this? Because I've seen some comments about Josh Maja. Mm-hmm. Now, he didn't have any service. There was a comment earlier mm-hmm. that said he, he didn't. He didn't have any service. But I thought he worked hard there, Emilio. He, you know, he did He did have a one opportunity that he worked for himself mm-hmm. and, you know, it was a shot on target. So maybe a little, little bit of shout out to Josh Maja. I, I don't, yeah. I don't think, you know, as someone said, I don't think he did much wrong. Colin Frazier yeah. put that. He tried, he tried hard, you know, good, yeah. you know, good movement. You, you look at his movement off the ball, pretty good. 
Yep. You know, he had had no service, to be honest. So um, okay. at the end of the day, he's going to be judged on, you know, opportunities, scoring opportunities and goals in the back of the net. So at the end of the day, he didn't do much wrong, but his movement's promising. I think he, he covered a lot of ground today. But, you know, we offensively, we offered little threat. That that, that was that was What about Cavallero for his cameo performance? Yeah, I sort of mentioned that. You know, I thought he had a good, when he came on, he looked good, he looked live. That's what I said. Don't be surprised. You might see... Decker Dover Reed and Cavalera playing with either side on, on Saturday against Sheffield United yep. rather than Nookman. Maybe I'm just putting it out there. Don't Stephen be mentions Cav too, so yes, that's very okay. interesting. And I do want to share this because, again, my friend Tony, who I've been going back and forth on Twitter for a very long time. Tony, I'm going to share this because this actually made my day. Okay, I'm going to mm-hmm. share this. Good point. Onwards and upwards. Yeah. My friend, see, you're with me on that. I'm with you on that. It is a good point. It isn't two points dropped in my book, but I understand why people are disappointed that it isn't good enough. But when you go in, like when I went in with the attitude that they just, that I just didn't want them to lose, I I obviously wanted them to win. It's a good point. It's a good Mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great stuff. And final thoughts before we wrap this up. You know, not a game that would stick in their memories for the years (laughs) to come, but. Maybe at the end of the season, we'll reflect on this game and say, you know what, that was a well-earned point. It's, it's a point that's kept us up. So yep. let's take let's go to Sheffield United on Saturday at home, and um, you know, you know, we got to we got to bit man up a bit more. We have got to man up because it's going to yep. be another tough, tough match on Saturday. Probably just as tough as today's one. Because Sheffield United are in form. Just you know, look at they've won away to Man United. Then the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. They're starting to pick up some points. So this is not this is not a game. We were talking about a month ago. We're absolutely three points on the cards. This is just as tough on Saturday. No, they're going to have to work for it to get all three we'll points. Have to earn, we'll have to earn three points on Saturday. So, yep. you know, go to the training ground, work on your tactics. Hopefully yep. no one's injured and, uh, you know, give ourselves the best chance to get a result. It's, it's definitely a winnable game and we know yep. we can win that. And we then go to 21 points. And you know what? Then we can see light at the end of the tunnel. But we, if anything less than a victory on Saturday won't be good enough. So oh. um, Okay. I get you, my friend. My final thoughts go... go Back to talking about the players. Listen, you know, if you're watching Cottage Talk and we are critiquing the players, you know, it's just that we want the best. We want the we want the best for our club. We want the best for these players. I, I will say it again. I believe in these players. I think there's a great player in Adam Olookman. I do think that there's a great player in Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Mm-hmm. We just want to see it. That's all. That We just want to yeah. see it. We, we want to see these players fulfill their potential because right now, they have a lot of potential, and we're just looking for them to show it mm. fully with us, and mm. hopefully they will. And and there are matches where they can really show it. So, mm. anyways, let's wrap this up, my friend. For my co-host, Emilio Danella, I'm Russ Coleman. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening to Cottage Talk.